Any number consists of individual digits. Each digit holds a position in the number it belongs to. The position of a digit dictates its value. Look at this number. Four on the far right holds the ones position. The place value of four is four ones or just four. The next digit is another four. It holds the tens position. Its value is not four. It's four tens or 40. The two appears in the hundreds position and its value is 200. Next is eight. It's in the thousands position and its value is 8,000. Positions in a given number keep on ascending as follows. Ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, ten millions, hundred millions, and so on. Commas are usually added to any whole number with four or more digits to make it easy to read. To insert commas, start from the far right and add a comma after each three digits till no more than three digits remain. To read or write out the name of a given number, start at the far left digit. Let's read the following number. Three is at the millions position, and the value of three is three million. Then the first part of the name of this number starts with three million. Place a comma where a comma appears on the number. This signifies the beginning of a new rank of digits. Start at the far left digit of this digit set. It's read 600. The next two digits are read 32. Since this set is in thousands, the word thousand must be added to indicate so. 632,000. Put a comma. Read the rest of the digits. Start at 1. It's 100, then 58. The entire number is read as 3,632,158. Let's try this number. Start at 7. It's 784. Since this set is in millions, then add million to the name. 784 million. Add a comma. Since the hundred thousands place has a zero, start reading from three. It's 32,000. Finally, read the last segment, 623. Let's do one more. 900,561. What about working backwards? Let's see how to convert the word name of this number to its numeral form. First, take note of the commas. They tell how many digit segments are there. This number has three segments. Each segment will be translated to three individual digits. So make nine digit spaces, three for each segment. Start with the far left segment. It reads 34 million. Since there is no hundred millions, then place a zero in the first space, then write three and four in the remaining two. Now move to the second segment. It's 57,000. Again, no number for the hundred thousands position, so place a zero. In the next two spaces, put 5 and 7. Finally, the last segment has 622. So simply put 6, 2, and 2 in the last spaces. Let's do one more. Prepare by making 9 spaces to hold all 3 digit segments. Start at the left space. It says 601 million. Right, six, zero, and one. Next, it's 570,000. Then write five, seven, and zero. Lastly, it's 200. Put two, zero, and zero. Note that any zero on the left 
of a whole number doesn't mean anything, so it can be omitted. On the contrary, zeros appearing in the middle or right end of the whole number do matter and must be kept in. The number line is a horizontal line that represents all real numbers like whole numbers, decimals, and fractions. For this lesson, whole numbers will be the focus. Positive numbers are located on the right side of zero and negative numbers on the left side. Whole numbers can be compared using the number line. The relative position of two whole numbers on the number line tells which one is greater or less than the other. Let's compare 3 and 7. Here's 3 and here's 7 on the number line. Because 3 is located to the left of 7, then 3 is less than 7. The sign for less than gives its pointed back to the lesser number. This statement can be looked at in a different way. Since 7 is to the right of 3, then it's also true to say that 7 is greater than 3. The greater than sign opens towards the larger value. Let's apply the same rules for the next comparisons. 81 is located to the right of 58, then 81 is greater than 58. Negative 9 appears on the left of negative 1, then negative 9 is less than negative 1. 134 is on the right relative to 98, then 134 is greater than 98. You may be using rounding in everyday life, but not realizing it. For example, if you pay $51.20 for groceries this month, you might tell a friend that you've paid about $50. Rounding is often used to make figures easy to say and comprehend. Rounding is done to a nearest place. In this example, you're asked to round this number to the nearest hundred. To do that, circle or underline this place. For this number, six holds the hundreds place. Look to the digit right next to six. If it's less than five, then the circle digit remains as is. If it happens to be five or more, then six would be rounded up to seven. In this case, two is less than five, so six remains unchanged. To finish up rounding, the last two digits must be switched to zeros. Let's round this number to the nearest hundred place. Circle eight and check whether the next digit on the right is less or greater than five. Since six is greater than or equal to five, add one to eight, it becomes nine, then change the remaining two digits to zeros. Now let's round the number to the nearest 100,000. Circle 8, look at the digit right next to it, it's 5. Since 5 is greater than or equal to 5, then add 1 to 8, it becomes 9. Then change all 5 digits to zeros. Let's do one more. Round this number to the nearest 1,000. Circle 6, since it holds the desired place, look at the digit right next to it, it's 4, 4 is less than 5, then keep 6 as is, and change all three digits on the right to zeros.